So we gotta do this. Ah, uh, hit the record button. Let me hit the intro music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drained Jesus. out now. No, you're not. <laughs> we just getting started. Yo, 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 yo. We got the intro music back. Ooh, what's up? Yo, 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 yo. Guess what? It's unique and T. Here we go, here we go. I'm unique, he's T. Let's start the show. It's unique and T. Here we go, here we go. It's unique and T. Let's start the show. Ha. What's up, y'all? Yeah, that's cool. My name is DJ Unique. Hey. This is the Unique and Cheese Show. <laughs> Special guest Frederick Taylor in the building today. I'm Cheese. Real quick, we're going to talk about this episode. Kit Rock Rant. Kit Rock. Chicago Police Superintendent getting fired before his retirement. What? Billy D. Williams getting Billy. misquoted. Kamala Harris drops out of the presidential Mama. race. George Zimmerman sues Trayvon Martin's family for $100 million. Dollars. And Michael Vick. All that and more right here today on the Unique and Cheese Show. But first, let's get some jazz first. Jazz. Okay, that's my jazz voice. I like that. It is lovely. It's I smooth. Like it's smooth. It's silky. Yeah. Oh, goddamn. I don't like so how about I just, expensive I underwear. I, just do this. I like expensive underwear. I know you do. I can tell. I've never bought expensive underwear. Really? Before. That's sad that you haven't. I'm one of those just buy some drawers type you of guy. You got to stop that. That's no. not really okay. good. Okay, I, get, buy, I buy two you, things. You I buy two buy things. Some, I buy some yeah. regular ass drawers, and then I get the thermos because I can wear those to the gym and stuff because I keep my legs warm and stuff. You those are cool. Legs warm. But I, I never, I never paid never. probably over ten bucks for some never drawers. Never ten bucks. I'm gonna get you a pair of nice underwear for Christmas. I'm gonna wear them. I know I'm gonna send you pictures. <laughs> get them some thongs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear like a he Santa hat. Wear it too. I'm gonna wear a Santa hat with the with the thing. Mm. Turn up anyway. <laughs> what's up, Cheese? What's up, brother? More than that, what's, what's up, up man? What's up? Yeah. He's in the building. I am. I am here. <laughs> cool, Jack. <laughs> cool, Jack. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, anybody, anytime somebody do a laugh like that and then say shit at the end of it, man, they ain't up to no good. Ain't up no good. <laughs> shit. Anyway, Mr. Cheese, how was your week, sir? Turn ups. My week Turn was ups. good, brother. What? I'm blessed. You are blessed. Let me, I'm blessed in the Lord. Can you share what you're blessed about? <laughs> I'm blessed. Tell me how you're blessed. I, I couldn't walk last week. Uh-huh. But now, <laughs> I'm running in the street. <laughs> I'm not only running. <laughs> I'm dancing. <laughs> dancing. No, 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 seriously. Word. Turn up. It was a blessed week for me, man. Um, I was able to get my leg. Ooh, way up uh, there? Yeah. Get your asshole I eight? Just... I couldn't get the... I'm just sorry. On, he put his legs. Put his legs. Why, yeah. sorry. Why are you messing up my, my blessing my with bad. the sorry. devil's Go, work? Going back to your blessing. My you know bad. Sorry. Turn ups. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Later. yeah, man. I'm just excited that um I'm on one one crutch one, now. Uh, what? Yeah, I one was, love. God one damn. love. One crutch. Who, who who is that? One love. Houdini. One love. They were forcing you said Houdini. You got it. I got it right the first time. Yo, yo, I was you know your music. I was second guessing myself. Young whooper snapper. I'll snap the whoopers. Oh, you better not snap it. Snap. Uh, policy. Mm. You're weak, but it was good, man. Yeah, so I'm excited about my recovery. Yes. Am I saying that right? Yeah, you said it perfectly. Okay. Okay. Your rehabilitation. Your there rehabilitation. you go. Exactly. Yes. That, I'm yes. so Which excited. is very important because yeah. the more you do now, the uh-huh. better off you're going to be as you continue to move through life, and you're going to avoid arthritis and okay. yeah. other problems. So you really need to do this. This Talk is really important. For you. And it's pain. It pain. is. Word. It's real still, pain. Still? It's no oh, oh man, yeah, it's real, it's the real. girl. She she was like. Like this, my leg. I showed you last time. Uh-huh. She hit it. I was uh-huh. like, I had to flip her. Like, <laughs> like, you just and her? she little. I'm like, you little, but you strong, man. Mm. But she was like, you know, we gotta get you, gotta get you right, gotta gang, get you gang. right. Exactly. Gang, 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 gang. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, good. That's yep. it. How was your weekend, my brother? Well, my week was pretty busy. It's pretty. Been, it's been, it's I'm been more a, it's important. Been a busy week. Look at me. Did nobody say y'all? Did anybody uh, say that? Did uh, I say that? Did uh, I say that? Uh, he ain't your cheerleader. I'm anyway, talking to you, man. Anyway, I had a you. I had a great week. It was a busy week, but it was a great week. It was right. a week full of gigs, gigs and a week full of friends, money, and a week full of family, family, food. Oh, Thanksgiving! Family. I forgot about my thing. That was last week. Oh, Come on, wash your ass. Wash your ass. We had a whole episode. Jeez. Okay, we finished. Are well, you still in pain medication? No. That, that I've been, my next I've been, question. You I've been, off oh, I've been off of that. Like, Did you sell them yeah. yet? You should sell them. No, I threw them away, dude. You threw them away? Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Oh my God. Money. That's Christmas that's money. money. I know. Yeah, that is. That's it was like, expensive, too. I heard that that's you can real. get paid. Street value? Shit. Yeah. I'm not saying be a drug dealer. I'm just saying you could have got some money for that shit. Yes. Really? Yeah, turn yeah, up. Go, go get them out the trash can. I'm hustling backwards. <laughs> a little bit. Oh. Yeah. yeah, sell them pills next well, time. Limping. Ladies and gentlemen, sell them pills. 
people like pills. <laughs> you're selling pills. <laughs> you're so wrong. I'm just saying. Don't you get people in trouble? Don't sell your pills. Don't sell the pills. Stay they, in school. Take they, them to the fire department or something like that. Wash yeah. your ass. People been selling pills forever. Even the doctors be selling the pills. They are. Yeah. They're the some of the paid. biggest violators. Hell yeah. In that world, they the drug dealers. Yeah. They're addicted. They're yeah. doctors that walk around addicted. So how much you think I would have got for that oxy? But did I say that right? Per pill? Yeah. You buying two, Are we in or not in a club on a Friday Turn in up. Hollywood? You're lying. Ooh. You're crazy. Are you kidding me? Oxy? People love pills. People love pills. We can get say. rid of Oxy in one night yeah. at a club on Hollywood Boulevard. Turn all the way That's crazy. Easy. No, it's real. real. That, and and, and came out with a, like a knot? Yep. Yeah. People like drugs. Where are you? America Man, loves drugs. drugs. That's a, that is our greatest systemic problem in this culture. Yeah. It was once alcohol in the, uh, the 19th century, mm-hmm. and it's evolved into drug culture in the 20th century, and now it's evolved into prescription drug culture right. in yeah. the 21st century century legal drugs mm, legal drugs now are the, the hot item folks are getting yeah man, yeah it's no joke yeah, that's a real we, we can do a whole thing. episode i thought on you were joking about no, no, that no. last time you told me you yeah, really no. yeah. yeah and it's trickled down to the school level like yeah. you have to be yeah. really watch right. your kids and all kinds of stuff yeah. like you know you're relieved if your kid is sneaking a beer in the garage or Word. you find a joint you're like uh, wow yeah. that's okay <laughs> it's like them finding Heavy. their way to pills and yeah. all the other stuff um you know, I have a friend uh, who, unfortunately, she was raising a t- teenage son, and he passed away recently oh, because oh, of the abuses terrible. of opioids and Ouch. things like that. Oh, really? that it's a real serious um, issue, and it rips families apart, and it's affecting all culture, and especially mm-hmm. the dominant general market culture, mm-hmm. and they are taking it very seriously now mm. unfortunately for decades and years as we mm. all know no yeah. one did mm-hmm. and because when, when now it was a black problem when it was a black problem and now it is systemically a anybody yeah. problem mm. and so now it's taken on a, a more serious tone yeah, yeah. So. hold me like the river jordan <laughs> needed that real quick to get out of my system all right first of all let's kick the show off uh we got some unfortunate news that just came through this morning uh, the young artist juice world Rest um in peace. jared anthony higgins right. or jared is it jared or jared j-a-r-a-d I think What's jared. jared jared anthony higgins uh, just turned 21 years old, wow. uh, died of a seizure right. in the, uh, and in the this, Chicago airport. It's crazy. Absolutely. And so we're not going to know exactly what happened as far as the yeah. seizure is concerned until right. there is an autopsy that's yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. I, I got to say, we're, we're, it's 50-50. This might be I some like sort it. of prescription drug uh, abuse yeah. or o- opioid abuse. Um, in, unless he had some sort of specific genetic disorder that or was that had gone or medical condition that yeah. had gone undiagnosed or yeah. pre-existing or whatever, right. but my fear is that this might be another case of op- opioid addiction. Right. So, Sucks, man. And so I'm really concerned about that. Uh, yeah. That's a very serious issue. And so he had young. this seizure in the airport. In the airport. And he was pronounced dead by the time they got him to the hospital. Yeah. Like, so he, he was still kind of coherent a little bit yeah. on, on the ride there. And by the time he got there, it was, that was it. It was it. And that must be terrible. I mean, I, I can't imagine how terrifying that must be for yeah. him as a young man. And of course, for his his, for family. his family, oh my, and you know the community of people that he has been an in key influencer for, yes. and yeah, yeah. Chicago, the South Side of Chicago, and its music scene has just spent decade after decade after decade losing some of yeah. the most interesting and talented music Word. artists. Every time somebody comes up, they go down or they get knocked sideways, or they're Kanye, you know. And uh, this is um, kept Chicago. Mm-hmm from really rising to the ranks of what you know LA has done and New York has done so unfortunate. and what Atlanta has done I mean it's, it's unfortunate terrible. it's really sad you know because you know Chicago for anybody that knows anything about music that's mm-hmm. a fresh market that's, that's the real deal and for whatever reason just stuff keeps happening there you know what I find out Chicago has a lot of they have a lot of great freestyle MCs they do like some I mean, something about yeah. living in Chicago, Chicago and I hear yeah. I hear people going well, on the top like of their ta- head. I'd be like, they're, wow, they're, they're talkers. They're off the top of the dome. There, yeah. it's pretty amazing. Like the improv world there, the number Word. of black comics that I've met and worked with out of Chicago, Word. they're geniuses. Yeah amazing you think maybe because it's cold in the motherfucker you got to think fast and keep well, that <laughs> might be a part of it because i'll tell you one thing i start thinking a lot faster when the cold hits me yeah so you gotta be quick, quick. Shit. like come exactly. on get your words out we got to get back to the warm or exactly. something we got we got to get well we got to get back to the warm we got to get off these streets yeah mm-hmm. shout out to chicago but once again rest in peace 
to Juice World. That sucks, Rest man. In peace. Just just last Monday he turned twenty one. Twenty one. Do you remember where you were in your twenty one? When you were doing your twenty one? On my twenty first yeah, birthday, birthday, I was at my brother's wedding. My brother got married oh, on really? my birthday. Yeah. 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 So yes. that's why I remember that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So do you remember where you were when you were twenty one? That's like a hundred years ago. That was a hundred years ago. I passed out. I threw up in a waste basket. Wow. Yeah. Was it the first time you drank, or you just went hard because I you went were hard? Hard. I went hard. You drank, call me. Uh, yeah, I went hard, and Word. I learned a very valuable lesson that. What did you learn? Learned, lesson that that you need to really pace yourself, and beer and liquor never sicker. Beer and liquor never, never sicker. sicker. Yeah, liquor beer, and beer that? never. Fear. You shouldn't start with beer and then go to liquor. Oh, that's where you get on the wrong Got train you. and it can end badly for you. Got you. Choo, choo. And then Jeez. the other one is liquor and beer never fear. So you start don't, with don't liquor. Don't mix it. Like don't mix the two. Or? Mixing is terrible. Oh yeah, you don't with mix. alcohol. Like you, brown and clear liquor, right? Uh, I, I do that, but that don't really affect me that no? much. But I don't try I don't But you're not normal. I don't though. drink to death. Yeah, though. you're, you're not a, a drink to death I might have person. three drinks, drinks that night, so I might have like one tequila, maybe a Hennessy, and something else. Like, right. but I'm not gonna be like next, next. Like, right. I don't need all that. Like, right. turn up. Word. Right. Cheese. Do you remember once upon a time when you were 21? Hey, uh, homie, when I was 21, I was out there banging car. No, you wasn't. I was all you was banging I on was people's like, doors like a Jehovah's like, Witness. Hey, hey, watch out! No, nah. <laughs> my grandma, my grandma, my mama would have whooped my. They would have whooped your ass. <laughs> he like, was all, washing all dishes down that street. <laughs> like, he was standing there washing was, the dishes. Actually, I was living with my grandma Eloise Gloria Eloise. Walker. God bless. Um, on the couch. Word. Wow. I was 21 years old. Hey. And um. Charlie, after that, I moved out. Mm -hmm. I, hey, I've been. Did, did it did it hit you that you were twenty one on your grandma's couch, or it just natural evolution? You just was gets got off the couch, or was you like, <laughs> nigga, I'm really on my grandma's couch. Nah, I was living my life <laughs> on my grandma's <laughs> couch. I was my grandma's baby. Turn up. Mm, were yeah. you bringing bitches over and shit? Like, yeah. Oh, oh stop it. <laughs> hey, I'm doing it too much. Hey, hey, it's, it, they can't get you. Yeah, Statute yeah, yeah. limitation, man. Yeah. It's over, man. It's all right. Actually, I had a girlfriend at that point. In Word. Time, but she I, spending I that on the couch? No, no, no. That's no, a rider. No, I'm about no. to say you got you a rider. No. Brother, you gotta get your own. That's not even a rider though. If my daughters came home and tell me, yeah, I spent the night with this dude at his grandma's house on the couch, I'd be like, you need to get your priorities straight. <laughs> we are not staying at no nigga's house that ain't that nigga house. Like, no, we're not be Oop, I'm not supposed to be saying nigga. We my, retired from not, that. Yo, you, what are we photo shoot in the middle of this shit? My grandma used to call them pissy tail girls. I hey, don't well, know why hey. them pissy tail girls like you, boy. You ain't got nothing going on for pissy yourself. Girls. <laughs> <laughs> grandma was telling the truth. She Shit. Was lying, though. You ain't got no job. You got a bunch of ain't gots. <laughs> Grandma's will let you know. Anyway, that's, that's their job. Uh, let's jump into this real quick. Hey, just real quick. Uh, I don't know if you are you guys boxing fans. Yes, fans of course. Of yes. Um, the homie was streaming it yesterday on his phone. It was cool to see it on mm -hmm. his phone. The Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz, Ruiz Jr. Jr. Yeah, the, the rematch. Um, it was a it was a decent fight. Yes. Um, I'm sometimes I'm used to watching the little guys fight, and when the little guys fight, they throw a lot of punches and right. shit. Like you know, what I'm saying with the heavyweights, it's more like stick yeah. and move. You know, reserve your energy. Blah yeah, blah yeah. blah. But as, as a boxing fan, I think Anthony Joshua fought a beautiful fight. Yeah. He didn't knock him out on no shit, but he used that jab, kept himself, him away, huh? stuck him a few times. Uh, shout out to Andy Ruiz. He got a chin like a motherfucker. Like, that yeah. nigga could take a hit. He yeah. could take a hit. But Anthony Joshua, this it looks so frustrating to watch because he kept hitting him with that jab. And he... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many of them I could take before I be like, hey, my, stop punching me in the face. Like, man. every time Ruiz would get ready to step up, this man could knock back like that. It was crazy. This is the fight. That, that's how you fight, though. That's a, that You're supposed to do. That jab sets up. That jab that, is beautiful. That, that's, and it creates that opening for yeah. that right hand. Because when you use that right hand, you're interested in using it one time. Yeah. Yeah, you just yeah. Let, lights out. Is this the fight that the, um, the guy got knocked out prior and before it, from yeah, the Latino guy? Yeah. yeah, okay. Well, this yeah, is yeah. actually a really exciting time because all of us grew up in the era, like you said, of the lighter guys uh -huh. were the more interesting fighters. Yeah. The heavy guys were the guys that our fathers and our grandfathers watched. Yeah. And mm -hmm. now we're getting to experience what it's like to watch great heavyweights fight. Well, again. I remember I remember heavyweights. Who was, who was your favorite Tyson. heavyweight? Tyson was, the, was, I came up when Tyson was like knocking people out in 20 seconds. 
Yeah, man, that was and, pretty. And, but, like he, we, but he we, was Tyson, a, and then the field. It was like it was like the Tiger Woods effect. It yeah, was just yeah. like he was just he was kind of by himself. Yeah, true. he was kind of by himself. But Ali was like, yeah. you know, there were. I mean, Frazier and Foreman. And there was other really great boxers. One hundred percent. I mean, I wish there had been more great yeah, boxers because Evander the Tyson. Evander was yeah. on his up. And, he was coming up at that point, and Word. Tyson was already declining. Yeah. yeah, it was on and the back. It was on the back. Yeah. It was a little bit, yeah. was a little bit different. I, yeah. I, I wish a, a focused Mike Tyson would have fought oh, yeah. Evander Holyfield. That would have been a good match. That would have been a good. Tyson, that would have been a good match. Tyson could have, if he had stayed focused, he would have fought into the early 2000s and retired as the greatest boxer ever of all time, hands down, bar none. Got you. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, you know, he was cleaning people's clocks at 19. Yeah. yeah. He when was, you look at he's that. still legendary. Late yeah. 80s, mid 80s yeah. to early 90s, Mike Tyson. Word. It's terrifying to watch. Yes. It's so, scary. Hit, hit, like his videos be like that. He'd be like, yeah. Yeah, right. and just you remember but, the video? But yes. Constantly <laughs> moving forward yeah. though. He's yeah. coming at yeah. you. He yeah. doesn't stop. No. I mean that fight with Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes, who I thought was a decent fighter, Word. he looked so terrified fighting him. Yeah. How could you not? How could you not? Was it, I think it was Jamie Foxx that was like, it's like somebody let their pit bull off the leash. And everybody's like, hey dog, get your dog. <laughs> hey, who pit bull is that? Hey yeah, dog, get real. your dog. Like, it's the truth. It was it was it was horrible. He was, was a true heavyweight. Yeah. yeah, and then just that one night where he had decided not to train. He had gotten into a big fight with Robin Givens. He Word. was over there in Tokyo. He Probably was effing around. He was. Yeah. Right. But if you remember that and fight, though, he still got wet, your boy. Buster? Yeah, he he knocked him down. Yeah, yeah he and that was fight. Doing Buster, good. He caught him. But Buster finished. That was a good fight. Good. Well, yeah. Buster's mom passed away yeah. the night yeah, before yeah. the fight. Ouch. Buster was on yeah. some other level stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Ouch. I didn't know that. Yeah. So there was a Damn whole man. level of drama behind that is Buster that night. Absolutely, and then literally Didn't Buster's next fight was Evander Holyfield, and Evander Holyfield just put his lights yeah. out. So Word. It's just, it's just one of those things. Well, like a name like Buster, you know, how good was you supposed to be? Like he's he was doomed from the beginning. That's true. Shit. You know. Anyway, so once again, shout out to uh, Anthony Joshua. Got his belt back. It was funny watching him too, though, because Anthony Joshua like towers. Yes. Over Ruiz, yeah, like does. it was like this. It was can, crazy. Can you do his voice? Because he don't even sound like a boxer neither. No, I got I got to hear it. <laughs> and I, I don't really follow the, the, him like the that. English vo- sound. I don't know. Really, I don't know. You like got it. it. You did it. Just leave me alone. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> oh, you, you had it. Oh, an English voice. He talks more like this. <laughs> yeah. Is that what he does? Oh, he's a bloke from Liverpool. Yeah, I was like a sophisticated uh, <laughs> yeah, British horrible. person. I know it is, and I've been mistaken for that for like a sophisticated British person. I can yes, see that. I have been. You know who did it? Who? Uh, Warren G. Word. Warren G. Never believed I was American. That's hilarious. He would always be like, "Stop lying to me." Stop lying. <laughs> like, nigga, I'm from Chicago. Chicago. Nigga, fuck? Nigga, you know, <laughs> never believe. To this day, I still believe he does not believe that. You know, we had oh, two episodes ago when we had our friend Ed here. I said I wasn't gonna say nigga no more. I think I've been saying it so much in my life. You can't stop. I can't saying, stop saying it. Saying it. I, I, I won't say can't. I won't yeah. say can't. But it's proven to be difficult to stop saying it. Because even on the drive over here, I'm like, nigga, get out the way. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nigga, use your signal light. Like, just, they wouldn't need niggas, probably. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Either way. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress. Right. Anyway. You didn't work on this, neither. You, that was your thing. You, the one thing I asked you to do. Look, the one thing I asked you to do. To finish. I gave up on that. We <laughs> try <it> next time. <laughs> Got to do everything. You ever had to do everything? everything? Exactly. Jeez. So that's how you get off the plantation, my friend. I hope so. Anyway, um, speaking of plantations, this ain't even no segue. That ain't no plantation segue. Anyway, so we let's talk about the uh, the kid rock rant. Ooh, that is kind so, of so. So for those that don't know, uh, recently Kid Rock. He went on a drunken rant yes. uh, at one of his yes. restaurants in Nashville. Yes. Was, it in, uh, was it in Nashville? It was in Nashville. It was in Nashville. Was in Nashville. I thought it was in Detroit. No, he, he has a restaurant uh, in Detroit, but this was in Nashville. Nashville. What was the name of the restaurant? Um, I'm flying to I, Nashville I don't on know. next Thursday. I don't know. I didn't write the name. I want to find that out. One. I'm going to go there. I want to go. I want to see this. But his his restaurant, he didn't. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that part, though. But anyway, so he's on stage. He's drunk, obviously, talking Word. shit uh, about Oprah, talking shit about Joy Behart. Saying how he doesn't like them and tell them they can suck a dick sideways and all kind of shit like that too. Which I'm just like, I accredited it all to just being a drunk guy on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Not at one point did I see a drunk white guy on stage right. because I, 
I've been I follow Kid Rock for a little while now. Right. Yeah. Kid Rock, when he first came out, was was one of the illest DJs that you would ever come across, like doing body tricks and shit. Yeah. Kid Rock is nice in the motherfucker. Yeah. Somebody who's into hip hop, somebody yeah. who's you know what I'm saying. So when I hear people in the crowd, uh, th- this is what caught me about the story. I- I'm hearing the girl that's recording it on her phone. As soon as he says something about Oprah, she's like, oh, "That's racist." Yeah. And I'm like, just because you talk about somebody of a different race that makes you racist, he didn't say nothing like that black bitch, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. None of that shit. All he said was he how he doesn't like her. Not that he doesn't like black women. So I don't understand how that well, equated to, it would be oh, very he's difficult. racist. He talked about Joy Behar, too. She ain't black. She's Jewish. She's Jewish. But either way, both of them can suck a dick sideways, according to Kid Rock. Yeah. I don't see how that makes him racist. So the whole rant was him, that people saying that, Kid Rock is a racist. But they were saying he went in on Oprah. He did go on because he don't like her because of what she stands for. He doesn't like how uh, one of the examples was because a politician will come out and then Oprah, since Oprah promotes this politician, then now this politician is special for some strange reason. Okay. Oprah can use her platform to do whatever the fuck she wants to do. You know what I'm saying? That's on her. Kid you Rock has her? the First Amendment to be able to say that that's yeah. bullshit to be able to do that. They both can do that. I don't see what this has to do she with being racist. She can talk about me and your show, and we our lives would never be the same. True just that. Just one time. True just that. Say, but how? Cheese. But just because, and then he's okay. So he was on like uh, what Oprah tells to white women. He, yeah, yeah. Oprah's main fan base is a bunch of fucking white women. How do you think she became a billionaire? Yeah. Just by a black audience? It's not no, enough of, of course us. Not. So, yeah, she cornered the market on having middle-aged white women be her fan base. Mm-hmm. I don't see how this is, how this is racist. Does anybody, does anybody have a different point of view on this that makes Kit Rock racist in this situation? That actually makes him racist? Yes. I think it's very difficult to evaluate him as racist uh-huh. because um, he has actually had a child with a black woman. Word. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, he has a biracial son, and he's on... He's going to be a grandfather in like five months Word. as well. Yeah. So I don't think that that's necessarily the case. The problem with the situation is that we have become hypersensitive over the past several years yeah. in our culture with the issues of race and culture. Word. So it's very difficult for each individual outside of their own cultural group to assess the behavior of anyone that's not like them. Word. And we get attacked, whether you're it's a black person talking about white people, a white person talking about black person, whatever. Everybody now is stay in your lanes. Hmm. And we have a media cycle. Stay that's in your lane like you, black people can only talk about black yes. people. White people can only talk about yes. white people. OK, that's yes. ridiculous. Those, but it is it is it is ridiculous. It is a uh, throwing it back in time like this sort to make America great again. And this like, oh, we want to go back to the good old days and what things were 50 years ago or whatever. Mm-hmm. This is real. This is a very real con construct and paradigm that is existing all around us every day Uh that is slowly moving us backwards and this is another example of that that we don't it's like they took amos and andy the tv show off of tv 50 years ago because Mm -hmm. they felt that it was misrepresenting black people when it's actually a really funny ass show word yeah same thing who who spoke up to say hey that's offensive the naacp Right. Okay. So it, my point is is this is that with the, the Kid Rock case, we don't want a white person to say anything about black people, especially black people that have crossed over into the white world. White people protect black people that make them money. Word. And so that's the problem here. And Kid Rock has always put himself in a position of being a rebel. Like uh-huh. you said, he's somebody with dope skills that, you know, lives by his own credo and code. Mm-hmm. Nobody is interested in rebellious behavior. No one is interested in anybody that is aberrant. They, we are in a time in our country where everything is about conformity and we're supposed to go along with whatever is happening and whatever is mm-hmm. being said. That's why we have all of this crap going on. Cancel culture. Yeah. Cancel it. Exactly. I hate it. I yeah. hate it. You're, you're, you don't exactly. agree with what I think. 
Exactly. Cantaloupe. Exactly. And Ridiculous. Exactly. So that's why we're constantly, with our foreign policy, kicking people to the curb, and why we're kicking people back across the border. Mm-hmm. We're, we're calling you know NFL players that want to take a knee sons of bitches. Mm-hmm. You know, grab them in the pee and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. We're just basically saying we want everybody back in their lanes, and Word. we think that our society functions better that way. And this is another systemic example of of that. I feel. I feel bad for for Kid Rock because this might be a career killer. I I, I won't say it's a uh, oh. I dropped my thing, my water. I won't say it's a career killer for him because wow. he's a amassed a, uh, a large fan base. I don't know, and he's still going to do what he does. Um, yeah, he, but, he, he, but will distributors take a step away? You know what I mean? Like you know, I mean, well, okay, so if his we were a Kid couple Rock execs at Universal. His you know? Kid Rock made in Detroit restaurant. Um, he did. He didn't renew the lease for that one because he uh, okay. So the the backlash that he received, he didn't like the way that nobody stepped up for him. You know what I'm saying? So he's getting all these people calling him a racist, getting all these people saying all these negative things about him. But he rides for the city of Detroit so hard. Agreed. Businesses Agreed. didn't Agreed. step up for him. His fans didn't this step is, up for him. This is my shit. point. We live in fear now. It but was that's, something that Cheese and I were talking about earlier before you got here. You know, that we now live in a fear-based culture where when somebody steps up and they get knocked down, there's it's not next person up anymore. Word. There's no one really protecting us or having each other's backs anymore. That's so it it does. And it's created an environment where the culture knows if you knock somebody down, nobody's going to come around to replace them. <laughs> that's, I mean, that sucks. It's terrifying. That's terrible. Yeah. It's undermining everything that we understand about the Constitution and this democracy. And it finally makes me think about things like maybe I should go buy some property in Africa. Like, I got to find another place to possibly live. That's what me and KK were talking I'm about. Like, you, yeah. when, when our kids start having kids and, we, and it's grandkids, yeah. we kind of don't want to be in America. Like, this place is turning into a shit show. It, it is. And, you know, and to think within that space, that makes you a radical. I- I, but I'm just saying Whatever. it automatically, it automatically yeah. because I remember growing up as a kid going like, I don't understand why James Baldwin, Josephine Baker, and Paul Roberson, and all these other great black minds uh-huh. moved to Europe. Yeah. I get it now. I get it now. I get Word. it now. It's like, it's very clear to me. Why? It's ridiculous. Because of situations like that, you can't say anything. Yeah. You can't say anything. And Kid Rock's not allowed to say anything. I've kicked it with Kid Rock. Word. You know, in Hollywood, chilling, yeah. whatever. He's cool. He's cool as fuck. He's cool as fuck. I don't have a problem with Kid Rock. Yeah. And, and he, I mean, I think he's a little dusty, but that's on him. That's, that's on, on him. him. That's, that's him. his style. But uh, exactly. That's his style. That's his thing, you know. And he's he's raising a black child, yeah. so I gotta have I got mad respect for that. Word. So I don't believe that he has that kind of malice in his. I don't heart. think so either. But I do think he has the courage to say what he thinks. And if we're gonna get real real about this, Word. Oprah ain't perfect, man. She's not. And she's you know at times she can be a little bit the fuck difficult to deal with. I don't know. Billionaires is the nicest people in the world. That's all I'm saying. There's no such thing as a nice billionaire. They're but. very difficult people to be around. And I and I and I get it from their point of view too. Yeah, Shit. and that's fine. And, and she get, had, get your she, money. But she has to be prepared to take that type of criticism as well. And Word. she was the person who needed to step up and say, "I don't have a problem with what he said, and I have a problem with the person who put that out there." Word. You know, she needed to step up. The person Not who dropped the ball. Really? Because even as Oprah, I don't got shit to do with that. That's what he wanted to do on his time. Right. I don't give a fuck. But I mean, but as far as to to you know to not let this keep going Word. and get into the media cycle now, now we're debating it, it if should've... she's friends with kid rock yeah step up uh, to the plate but if y'all don't even know each other and you, and he's saying that he don't like me fuck him like i, I don't give a fuck about kid I rock think people can... have the right to not like people you know, I, think I think they that, do I too i think that, that's perfectly helpful if somebody said something to about me that they didn't like me and eventually someone's gonna say something about you that doesn't like you you know and they're gonna come to you and say hey person a said this about you uh-huh. you know the, the correct answer is like they have the right to say that they can say that yeah and if they ever wanted to talk to me personally yes they, i'm 100 i'm always 100 down to talk with anybody, anybody. that exactly. wants to have a conversation right if you just like i don't like you well, why don't you like me i just don't like you exactly. well, why so the, because i don't right. i so, don't want to talk to that person so the money in the bank is that oprah has this show this sunday morning talk thing that comes on the own network Word. bring them on bring them on bring them on why do, then, why don't you why, like that's they, a brilliant then, idea it, exactly and settle the matter yeah like adults with words with words exactly turn up y'all so, hear that Wash your ass, brush your teeth, listen to Freddie. <laughs> anyway, so I don't know. My judge and jury says Kid Rock is not a racist. 
just because you talk about a black person doesn't make you a racist. That's fucking stupid. Yeah, but it's convenient to talk about racism and to bring yeah. these things up. It's like it's what we do. It's the move. And I, but it, okay, let's, let's because say who it. talks about who doesn't. Okay, let's let's talk about who right now in our culture, in our society, is talking beyond racism and talking about cultural unity. That is someone that people are taking seriously, that they care about, that they value. Uh, I don't know Ariana it, Grande. Like, I don't know. Like, who is she? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't follow her. Does, doesn't matter. Exactly. I can throw any name out there, and you're like, oh, maybe they are. But you know, the point is, is that that's not what's popular now. Everything is about tearing the society down, not building it up. Word. We're on the wrong path, on the wrong track. Very, very fast too. Very quickly, very faster quickly. than anything I've ever seen, heard of, or read about. Yeah. And I'm very concerned about this. A little bit. Yeah, I'm I'm fortunate to a sense that my my children aren't babies anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I find that whatever this next generation is going to be, that's born with it within 10 years of them being born. What they're going to walk into is right. going to be a even a more shit show like right y'all's grandkids woo, turn up yeah but they're gonna walk into a house on fire it's gonna be a yeah. very it's, it's it's not going to be something that is at a distance uh -huh. it's gonna be something that's on their doorstep yeah and there's going to be an immediacy of now that's gonna have to happen with them word that you know not since rosa parks you know not relinquishing her seat on the bus mm -hmm. and the marches and all this other stuff where it was like hey this is coming Word. That's how it's going to be for them. We just can kind of see it coming. Yeah. And we are worried that the next generation is not prepared to deal with it. I and mean, how do we even prepare them for this stupid shit that's happening? Like, just don't talk, don't talk to nobody. Don't look at nobody. Don't say anything about anything because if you say it, everybody's going to be offended. Kind of shit. I know. I don't know. And, and that's not the perspective to take. More importantly, I want to know, how do you suck a dick sideways? How did that even happen? Is it like when you just like like that? Or do you? how do you suck a dick sideways? I don't know. You should know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I've never sucked a dick. I, I watch a lot of porn, and I don't think I've ever seen nobody suck a dick sideways. Or maybe I did, and I didn't recognize it. Like, oh, that's how you suck a dick well, sideways. Well, you realize when you watch an excessive amount of porn, there is an assumption that that's halfway to actually... Sucking a dick sideways? Yeah, kind of. Oh, I don't know. If anybody knows how to suck a dick sideways, just send it to our DM. You're watching a lot, <laughs> of, you're watching a lot of video, <laughs> instructional media on how to do it. I won't say that's instructional. I if you know. are watching porn to know. learn how to fuck, I think that's issues. So you're saying that your brain doesn't randomly access the porn images that you've recorded into your mind at the While moment. I'm fucking? I'm not saying while. You could be walking down the street, driving your car, or sitting at the DMV. Uh. If, I, if I'm speaking honestly, yes. when I'm watching, it's just for that time while I'm and watching. You're able to if I'm at the DMV later, I'm going to be like, oh, maybe them titties are so in it. Nah, I don't give a fuck. Like, it's not, <laughs> it's not happening right now. I could just, I want to well, get there. Yeah! In this conversation. Act like you don't watch porn? You don't watch no, porn? I don't. I'm, I'm sanctified for what You a mind. lying motherfucker. I changed my life. I'm glad you did. Could you fucking shave next time you checked? <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Show anyway, your nurse no, watch. but keep it real. When I'm ha in that moment no, of watching, watch. yeah. then that's it. That's but fascinating. Kudos to myself. I don't think I've watched porn in fucking months now. Nice. Oh, you're such a. <laughs> that's pretty good. Ooh, I used to watch this shit every day. Real. You fucking kidding me? I used to watch shit on my phone. Like, nigga, I had a problem. I think I kind of fixed myself. Turn up. Good for you. Anyway. You be very proud of yourself that you have not watched porn in, in months. You're terrible transit. We, we need to work on our transition. Segways. They're segways, called segways. Yeah. Sorry. Segways. Speaking of segways, uh, Chicago police superintendent got fired three weeks before his retirement. Um, if you don't know, back in October, former superintendent Eddie Johnson was found at a stop sign or a stop light. He said stop sign. So he's at a, stop, a stop, sign stop sign sleeping in his car. Yes. It's about like 1230 in the morning. Correct. Uh, some fellow officers came, approached his car. They don't know who it is. You know what I'm saying? They knock on the window. He just flashes his badge. And then he just leaves. So he didn't explain to them why right. he was there or no shit right. like that. Right. So by the time he talks to the mayor, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Lightfoot. Lightfoot. Lori, Lori, Lori Lightfoot. Lightfoot. So by the time he talked to her, he was just like, oh, you know what I'm saying? It's for my heart medication or whatever the fuck. It was like blood pressure blood medication, pressure medication. That he had neglected to take. Yeah. And that makes him which, tired. Which I thought that was an interesting excuse for, yeah. because of what I understand about blood pressure medication it's mm -hmm. designed to lower your blood pressure uh -huh. and when your blood pressure is lower mm -hmm. you get tired and you fall asleep right if you don't take your blood pressure medication mm -hmm. your blood pressure goes up uh -huh. and you get kind of ampy okay get, then you, yeah so i don't 
think yeah. that is true. I don't think it's true either. But and what, neither did Miss Lightfoot. But what was wrong Lightfoot. with him falling asleep, right. though? What well, because the, I well, think Well, one, because you had a stop sign. And, oh, and, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. And two, oh, for he, two. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, he's systemically trifling. He didn't really earn the job. He, no, was, he did not. He was appointed by the previous yes. mayor, Rahm Emanuel, who they, put him in there because that was his boy when mm -hmm. there were five other candidates that were far more qualified for that yeah. job. Mm -hmm. And, and I, he admitted that that wasn't the job that he wanted. And he admitted that was a job that he was surprised that he got. And everybody knew that what he did, had did they a, rush it because they wanted to get the other guy out? Because of the, yeah, uh, the, was, the kid was getting killed, because and of the all kid getting shit. killed, and all this other stuff, mm -hmm. Lashawn, I think the kid's name was. Yeah, you know that it was political, and mm -hmm. Chicago mm -hmm. is a political city that revolves around this agenda-driven politico environment for the people that run the city. It's Co all about them. Rumor and, is I heard Chicago's mad corrupt. That's what I keep hearing. Well, Chicago, I talked to the Uber Chicago, driver and the Uber driver Chicago's said. Chicago's been mad corrupt since the late 19th century. God damn. Going through the Capone era all the way into the Daily Machine and the Lord 50s, of mercy. 60s. I mean, you have to remember the Chicago riots at the Democratic National Convention in 1968. I mm. mean, Chicago is a very troubled city and it has been systemically for a very long time. It's an incredibly racist city as Word. well. Mm. I have white friends on the south on the north side of chicago that make jokes that the only reason to go to the south side is to go to a white Sox baseball game yikes that's the only reason they go down there well what what's other reasons to go there there's no other reason to go to the south side well what, what, what's how's it racist that they say that because the only reason they would want to go down there is to watch a baseball game not to enjoy the culture that's on the south side of chicago but then, what, what, why would they want to go down there though to, to watch a baseball game to watch I, the white Sox. okay but let's say the white Sox stadium isn't there why else would they go down they there? would never go there i know they would never go there but i'm asking what reasons would they have to go there Oh, there's plenty of things to do on the south side of Chicago. There's amazing museums and Word. restaurants yeah. and culture nice. and music. You ain't been there. Shut there's up. Actually, I'm just assuming. There, there's actually, uh, <laughs> there's assuming. beautiful I went there. You don't know if I went there Have you been there? Yes, I have twice. When you been there? Thank you. My when? grandmother, um, brother was from Chicago. Turn no. out. I'm happy. See? Scratch your neck. And I ain't never been there. I just got you. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> anyway. So, Freddie, who, one who has the yes. information, can you there, continue, there's, there's, please? There's great um, colleges over there. The Obamas live over there. My Word. mother went to high school over there. My Fair mother enough. went to high school with Minnie Ripperton nice. as wow. well. La, 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 at, uh, exactly. La, 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 Hyde Park la, 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 High School. There's some up. beautiful things that have happened over there. And, you know, people don't know. I literally know white people from Chicago mm -hmm. who know nothing about the south side of Chicago. Wow. Nothing. Mm. And then I have relatives now, in my uh, family who have never you, gone to the north side of after Chicago. After you share this information, yes. do they peak an interest and want to go check it out? Like, oh, like, oh, I didn't know that, Fred. You know, next time let's let's go or blah blah blah. Like, do they want to go after you tell them or is it still like, "Oh, okay. Baseball." Kind of that, and if they were going to go, they would go with me and because we live in a fear-based society, they're not going to go on their own. Word. Yeah. They're I scared. Mean, They're just flat out scared. What was the probability that something would happen to them if they Very did go? Minimal. See, that's right. These minimal. motherfuckers watch too much TV. They, well, they watch too much TV, absolutely. And they read too much crap on their phone. Word. Yeah. So how does that feel kind of being like the in-between, like no one was going on on the north side, no one was going on the south side, and you've got to, in the middle, like, what's wrong with y'all? Why y'all not talking to one another? Like, this is a beautiful city. Why don't y'all both enjoy both sides? Like, it's a train ride. It is. Is it's it? a it's, it's a train, it's a train right right and it's one train you know that goes in a straight line yeah get know? on the train go on the, get on the train how it much just, train costs nothing it's a train it's nothing 99 it's round trip round trip you can go hang out and then go back and go back and you can you learn move so there. many things and actually the person that discovered the city of chicago was a black man turn up yes and that has that has fallen off the historical landmark as, as far as people knowing the truth about that city as well. Word. Black people have been instrumental in building that city and making it what it is today. Turn up. But people just don't want to embrace those kinds of things. They're, they just, they love it. Fear, a woman told me this who, she's a life coach. She said, fear is like a warm blanket. It, mm. you, you cuddle with fear. Once you know fear, fear becomes your friend. Mm. And you don't want to do anything outside of that. And that's why people will get incredibly scared and they like 
being scared. It's comfortable. Mm. But isn't the violence is really on the south side? It's really high with the gun shooting, the young black it, brothers it, it, killing it each is, other? There is a high incidence of crime on the south side of Chicago, but it is isolated in specific and areas. restricted areas okay. as Word. well. And if you understand how Chicago works, you understand how yeah. to navigate it. In many instances, you can avoid a lot of those problems. Yeah, it's just like being it, in South Central. It's like being in. It's yeah. the yeah. same thing. Or, yeah. or Watts, or you know, uh, mm-hmm. South or North Philadelphia, Word. or the South End of Atlanta. There will be all of these major Detroit. Yeah. Period. Mm-hmm. You know, all of these major cities have these types of systemic problems. Yeah. And you can go out into the rural areas, and there are places yeah. that you'll get shot. Word. You 100%. start. You start effing around in Columbia, Mississippi. Hundred <laughs> percent. That you yeah. messing with something you don't need yeah. to be messing with. Yeah. So this is this mythology that crime in cities is black people is not true or mm-hmm. Latinos is not true. Word. And crime happens everywhere, everywhere in America. And more people get shot in America that are white than that are black. And more people commit crimes with guns that are white than black. But you don't. But, yeah. you, but the media has flipped it to create an image that we are the perpetrators. Yeah, yeah. Ha. Hear you. Which we very rarely are walking around with firearms ready to kill somebody. I walked out of a McDonald's a few months ago because a white dude walked in with a duffel bag. Yikes. And I'm like, I'm leaving. Yeah. And, and that's sad. It's sad and that he was I at get, McDonald's, but go I, ahead. And I get anxiety now when I go into malls. I get anxiety when I'm in movie theaters. Because you just don't know who's in there yeah. and what's up. Hey, and, um, not to cut and I know a brother's not going to shoot me unless yeah. something gets started. I don't want to. I, I remember like Chicago, the poets. Who were they? The, 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 the Dead Poets Society? Wait, was it them? them? The Lost Poets? I think the Lost Poets. The Lost Poets. Yeah, they were yeah. early, late, late 1960s, early 1970s. Oh, um, and the then, revolution they, will not be, be televised. Yeah, exactly. right. But they, a lot of their music has been sampled by a lot of amazing artists yeah. and hip hop artists yeah, and stuff like artists, that. Yeah. yeah, so common. Yeah, yeah. But, they, but you know, Chicago has been the launching pad of some of the greatest thinkers mm-hmm. in the history of African American yes, yes. history. So what as, what makes that well. so bad is that you got some bitches here like Eddie Johnson. Right. Um, who's just systemically lazy? He's just he a is. clown. You know a who he bit. is? Remember the guy from uh, Family Matters that played the cop? Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> that's Eddie that, Johnson. That's Eddie Johnson. That's Eddie like Johnson. Him. Right there. He uh, that's so, who he is. That's exactly yeah. who he is. Okay, so so he he had the whole blood medication story, uh, mm-hmm. but then it comes out that uh, he was at this restaurant called Saris, the Saris <coughs> Cafe. Have you ever been to the Saris Cafe? Yes. Uh, so see, he was at the Sarah's Cafe with another woman that wasn't his wife. Yeah, there you go. Dirty she bro. she was she He's was a, uh she dog. was another police officer on his like mm-hmm. security detail or whatever the fuck. So you okay. know what I'm saying. So I think he said he normally has a driver, whatever, but he let the driver go home early that night, and then he's out having drinks with her. Yeah. So the, by by the time it gets to Miss Lightfoot, the, the mayor, uh, now the blood medication story is a little bit out the window, and he's like, man, I'm, I might have had a drink or two. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but he had more than one drink. Yeah, more than one drink. He probably he did up, take his blood pressure lady. medication, be- and you know that may have elicited him falling asleep. Yeah, because when you're on blood pressure medication, it is advised mm-hmm. that you keep your drinking to a minimum oh, because zero. it can make your blood pressure plummet Word. too low, and then you will pass out. Yeah. So in the car get, do, so in at a stop sign. Right sign exactly <laughs> late at night 12 do we get his pension now or yo he will still get his pension oh, probably okay. he's gonna he's gonna get that because i thought I, if you get fired it doesn't matter he, yeah he would have to literally go kill someone not to okay. get that pension you, you okay. know what's crazy you know how much money he made last year how much? like two hundred and sixty yeah, thousand dollars he's, he's and he I was, was like what and he was the least what? qualified person for that job yeah. some uh, that job should have gone to somebody else and I'm sure Lori Lightfoot was looking for an excuse to get rid of him anyway. She finally found Probably. one. Probably. And, 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 they're, and they're going by the whole theme of we need to clean up Chicago. We're going to clean up our image and da-da-da-da-da. She better be careful with that shit because I don't think motherfuckers that do dirt want to be cleaned. You no, know and saying, so. Chicago never wants to be cleaned when it when it comes to that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Chicago is a, a crime town. And anyway. It's always been a crime town. Back in the day, I used to be on some bullshit. So I, I know bullshit when I see bullshit. And as soon as I read this story, I'm like, Eddie Johnson, you own some bullshit. Yeah. So, yeah, but yeah. but bullshit floats in a systemic fear-based uh culture. Mhm. And uh so they got footage of what he did that night, but uh the mayor and all that didn't put the footage out and all that cuz she think it would wreck his family and his wife no, and shit. She and thinks it will wreck the police department as well. Probably too. Put it out there because he's representing. Yeah. He's he's got the so badge. So that's why they just kind of closed They say, "Okay, we yeah. just fired he him." Just fired he just fired him. Well, he didn't get fired. He retired. He didn't retire. He got fired. Yeah, they fired him. Uh, I've heard language going in the other direction as well. 
that they I read fired. I've read both. Oh, so I, they I read probably Lori Lightfoot. Let well, that, you know what it is? It go. is it is fired, but on paper, uh-huh. it's, it's gonna retired. say retired, so he can get that pension. Exactly, sons of bitches. Because they give him the pension, he goes away. If they don't give him the pension, then he turns around and he sues them, and he gets more money. Mm-hmm. So they want him to just go away. Word. So go away. We won't say anything about you. Yeah. Don't say anything about us. Mm-hmm. We're letting you go, but we won't tell anybody. We're letting you go. Eddie Johnson, all punk. Dirty Stone. Yeah. Anyway, I want to see the footage. I no, want to see it too. He might say, "He might one of them dudes." <laughs> and, uh, and, exactly. and Eddie, Eddie Johnson sounds like a sixth man shooting guard for the Seattle Super Hot Sonics in like 1977. Wow. Pass it to Eddie Johnson coming off the bench in the fourth exactly. quarter when the team's up by 20. Like exactly. Yep. That's Eddie Johnson. <laughs> Anyway, he dribbled, like, real high. <laughs> let's move on to our, our next thing. Okay, now t- t- back to what we're talking about with the culture, the cancel culture. Not not even just the cancel culture, but just that uh, we want to be on the same wavelength with bullshit. Anyway, so 82-year-old actor Billy D. Williams. Yes. So he gave an interview Cold to 45. Esquire magazine Cold in which 45. he stated that he identifies with his masculine and feminine side. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So people took that and was like, oh, Billy D. Williams is gender fluid. You know, it's like, what? No, Billy D was saying that he's a man, but he does have the sensitive feminine. That's why he, he feels so his feminine. clean. Wear the scarf around yeah, that's Looks why like he has emotions. That's why he has feelings. He knows how to tap into Four his five. feminine side. Yeah. But people took that and ran with it. Ran. And how about he's gender fluid and shit? I'm like, relax. The, the, the crux of this show is gender fluid. There are so many elements of the unique and cheese show yeah. that are binary. How? You want to explain it to him? The fact that I'm gonna he likes let, um, dick. <laughs> <laughs> is that what the, it is? Well, the, the point is this, is that Billy D is just basically raising the point of the obvious that uh-huh. we are all yeah. gender fluid. And yes. we all have aspects and characteristics of both genders. The problem has been, once again, it's the media image. I mean, mm-hmm. this is the guy that used to sell malt liquor in the 70s and was the, and was the and was the ultimate alpha male Fuck for yeah. black people for a very long time. Yes. And he's reached a, a time in his life where he can just say whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, he's, he's 82. He's 82 and he's Billy D. Williams. Yeah. And, you know, it came up as a topic of conversation. And he was honest. Yeah. Oh, and he said, I have ca- and mm-hmm. characteristics of both. And if you go back and you look at his career and who he is as a person, you're like, yeah. oh, yeah, I see it. I mean, he had this slick back yeah. hair. He was a really good looking guy. Like like yeah. yeah. Like, so it, it makes complete and total sense. And it doesn't take away from his masculinity in any mm-hmm. way, shape, or form. In fact, I argue that it enhances it. I think it enhances it. And if he did too. not have this sort of feminine side to his hyper masculinity yeah. he wouldn't have been as appealing as he was for as, as long as he was especially and I think two the women star wars franchise dropped the ball on him Word. i think the guy that they should have really picked it up with was the lando calrissian hell yeah you know timeline yeah and they missed it yeah that was 100%. a big swing and a miss and again you know you get to a certain point as a black man you're going to say whatever the hell you're going to say. Word. You're going to say what you think. And I think he's just letting people know. And, you know, this new Star Wars movie is coming out. He's mm-hmm. in it. Yeah. But he's going to do it his way. Yeah, that and he right. just tilted the scales back in his direction. Uh-huh. You know, because he's going to be the most interesting cat in that movie. Word. Because right now he's the one the media is hyping over this. Yeah. Because they're so insecure about black male sexuality. Yeah. You know, and... You watch it all the time. They they cannot handle the bandwidth yeah. of black male sexuality. Yeah. Where we have like, not like a man man. Right, like, exa- yeah. exactly. Because we still live in this plantation slavery space of black men are big and strong. Yeah. And they lift scary. And scary. Blah, 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 yeah. And they're these like very sexual, demonic creatures, mm-hmm. you know, that we love to perform for us. When a black man says that I have a feminine side, mm-hmm. that is basically an advertisement for saying, I'm not here to perform for you. Word. I'm out of that. Yeah. You know? Turn up. Exactly. And so white people get upset. And this is another example of another story that could have easily been bypassed by the media, but the white media leaped on it. Word. You know? And so here, for all the ones that again. all the ones that think that Billy D is gender fluid, even Billy D said, I don't even know what the hell a gender fluid is. Exactly. And you know what you'd want to do? You'd want to go back and look at who picked up this story. And I will bet you the same people that picked up the Kid Rock story mm-hmm. picked up the Billy D. Williams story. And I will bet you 
eight out of 10 of those media outlets were white and not black. Mm. And you have to be really careful about what the white media is picking up out mm -hmm. of the black world these days because they're going for the stuff that they think is going to sell advertising. Word. And trying to make Billy D. Williams into a transgendered person <laughs> sells advertising. Even he doesn't identify with any particular gender. gender. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and then imagine white people look, oh my God, I know exactly who Billy D. Williams is. Yeah. That's crazy. Just like Kid Rock. I know who Kid Rock is. I know who Oprah is. Oh my God. This is white news. Yeah. There is two types of black news. There is black news for black people and there is black news for white people. Word. This is black news for white people and yeah. that's what they like. That's what they listen to and I can fucking care less. Well, here we go. He was misunderstood. He was basically See, saying no. that men need to get in touch with their softer side. Billy D. Williams identifies as a male. He said a very cute male. So people need to calm the fuck he's down. He's basically saying he still gets laid. Yeah. He's like, I'm 82. I get, I get I'm pussy. still pulling. I'm yeah. still draining the club. Turn up. In fact, <laughs> he hangs out at a place over in the valley on Ventura called Davenport. It's on Friday nights. You want to go? We can go ask him ourselves. He hangs out there every Friday night. They do jazz over there. I believe him. Oh, I exactly. want to hear some jazz, though. Yeah, I go there for the jazz. Well, Turn up. And you might have a conversation with Billy D. Williams. I would love to talk to Billy D. Williams. Who wouldn't? Right? Who wouldn't? I, I, would Matter, I would just want to sit there and listen to him talk. Me too. Billy D., if you ever want to do the Unique and Cheese show, show, there you go. Come on, hang out. Yes. Come on, we, we right here in Glendale on, with the man. Armenians. Turn up. Anyway, um, we got uh, three more stories to try to knock out real quick. Three more. Uh, Kamala Harris drops out of the presidential race. Um, in an email <laughs> message to her supporters, Harris said that her campaign lacked the financial wherewithal to continue. Her, her campaign was being dragged down by stagnant fundraising efforts, contribution levels that barely budged over the year, and allegations that her political operation lacked discipline and strategy. That's why I think she dropped out of the race, because I feel that she and maybe some of the higher ups saw you ain't gonna win yeah. so since you're not gonna win have a lot of i don't need you too. to try to take the votes away from the people that we think can win so why don't you go sit your ass down somewhere please kamala like turn up would you like to leap in first on this one? Oh, I, I, just real quick just something simple I, I think she just didn't have a um a big m margin of black people if i'm saying that right uh -huh. like, like i don't think because of her being an attorney right the, was she the district attorney what was she she was like a, the head cop Something, whatever, but she like was a police the prosecutor, like, yeah. Yeah, 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 prosecuting attorney, like yeah, she's yeah, a head yeah. prosecuting yeah, attorney. Yeah, so, yeah, so I think, and she put a lot of brothers in, in jail because of the marijuana, in the Bay. yeah, in the, the marijuana Oakland. thing, and now it's legal. And mm -hmm. they, they, I think they asked her a question on one of the panels, it was basically explaining. It. They asked her, they said, um, what are you going to do about the people that you put in jail that, that had the marijuana? And she uh -huh. couldn't answer it, she was like, right. shook. Like, right? like you know so uh -huh. i think that was a, to me i think that's why uh, one of the reasons she yeah had this shape i have a um i'm falling somewhere in between okay. both of these uh she ran her campaign like a hip-hop record label like an incompetent <laughs> hip-hop record label Word. where you've got one rapper who's making all the money uh -huh. who's an idiot yeah yeah and everybody else just running behind them, ass out. Word. And that's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> and all of the real politicians yeah. are going like, oh, my God, we got involved in this. And I didn't realize I'm working for, you know, Death Row Records 2019. Uh -huh. You know, they thought they were working for a legitimate organization. Yeah. It was never her campaign was never a legitimate organization. And those Word. were the things. And I was telling people this like months ago about her. I said, she's not going to make it. it. The people involved with her are too incompetent. They can't mm -hmm. schedule things yeah. like they were screwing up speaking engagements. Word. They were. I had people that I knew that were not getting their checks. Yeah. All that. That stuff that we deal with in our community about poorly run black owned businesses. What's happening? That's exactly what was happening in this particular case. And then in the other part, on the other end, on the white side, where I have like my high-end, liberal, rich, white friends who are like, I love Kamala Harris, she's so amazing. She mm. has that Obama quality. And I'm like, no, you just like talky black people. Yeah. And she's just talking. Word. And I'm like, this girl's busted behind the scenes. Yeah. You're just into the rhymes. Yeah. I know that Word. up in the studio, she's a pain in the ass. Yeah. White folk don't want to listen to that. Mm -hmm. They want somebody to get out there and be super showy and be performance art for them. Word. And then they just, and that was what she was riding on. And that will work to sell records that mm -hmm. will not get you into the White House. Obama got into the White House because he is competent. 
and smart Word. in spite of what anybody else can say kamala is not that person there's a um uh, that new uh, dave chappelle special that's on netflix uh -huh. there's a part where he talks about people that he hung out with behind yeah. the scenes he was in there. He was talking about, yeah, I was hanging out backstage in yeah, San yeah. Francisco. Kamala was in there. Obama was in there. Yeah. Nero was in there. Yeah. She's that bitch up in the club, man. Word. Like, I've known you a long time. Kamala might have come through one night. That Just at a gig? Like, <laughs> just at a gig on Hollywood Boulevard. You don't know. Yeah. She was that bitch. Word. Back in the day. Yeah. That type of person doesn't end up in the White House. Yeah, they do. Not black. Oh, not black. Here we go. T say that. Right. They got to be orange. The the bar for getting into the White House being black is Harvard educated. Uh -huh. blah, 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 blah. I mean, you know, you'd be fucking brilliant. Right. You know, only trifling ass white people can like get into the White House. Yeah. On, you know, I mean, that's yeah, the yeah. truth because any, any, any incompetent black person is never going to get that high in Word. politics, you know, but she's not that competent. You know, she should work for an organization that raises money. Word. She should have her own TV show, Word. talk show. She's that. Got you. Which is not that impressive. It makes money. Yeah. But it's not impressive. Word. You know, yeah. she she wasn't ready for prime time. And I'm glad that she had the sense to get out now. Mm -hmm. And I wish she had taken Cory Booker. Mm hmm with her when she walked out the door really yeah she should have announced that she was leaving and that she was going to give Corey a ride Ow! <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> shots fired bang bang yeah i'm Turn done up. i'm done with all that i'm done with all of these like black pretending clown show people that are just good behind the mic but they Word. can't do nothing else yeah we need we show. need real we need substance we need substance we need, substance. We, need black, substance. we need real black leadership black substance yes what, what, what kind of word can we use for that like black substance it, Ponder about that for me. We're going to answer right now. Just think about that. Anyway, so moving on, we got a couple more stories. Uh, George Zimmerman sues <laughs> Trayvon Martin's family for more than $100 million. The, the best part First about this all, story is like, what year joke. is this? It's, it's hard to, the, the, the point is, is this like, this sounds like a story that should have happened in like 2012. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yes. this story is so old. It's so stupid. And he's obviously pathetic. Yeah, a thousand and he, percent. obviously whatever money he did make, because he did make money off of shooting this black kid, sure, yeah. he spent it. $250,000. So at the end of the day, he wasn't even white anyway. He hood. Yeah. He back again trying yeah. to get another check. Yeah. He's an awful, awful human being. Man, and he's going to mess around and get stomped out is what's going to happen. I'm surprised he hasn't already, man. Well, this like, is what I was talking to you about before. Like, if society turns their back on him and says, okay, free ass whooping yeah, yeah. somebody's gonna stomp them out yeah, yeah, right. feel, that's yeah, all this is like saying. people get sick of this because yeah. white people can't afford to have this clown get uh -huh. into the news cycle with this crap and black people certainly have zero tolerance mm. about George right. Zimmerman and, well hold on for, for those that don't know if you don't and know and he's half Latino so it, he'll just get killed that's why I understand why he's anyway uh, so for those that don't know so Zimmerman is suing Trayvon Martin's parents their attorney and others uh, Zimmerman claims that he was the victim of a conspiracy along with malicious prosecution and uh, defamation. He shot a 17-year-old. Yeah, but he's saying that they drag, they dragging his name if all through the mud well, now. Well, because he shot a 17-year-old. I know what Whether he did. Whether it was an accident or not. If you ran over an Asian kid or an Armenian kid in Glendale... Uh -huh. That you gonna get dragged, whether yeah. it was your fault or not, or whatever the accident, whatever you're gonna get dragged. That's what, you know. kill a child, you get dragged. Yeah. End of story. And I, I know this. I'm just saying. I'm telling to the people for that that don't that don't know the but story. They don't know. They don't know. So they filed a lawsuit in Florida. Zimmerman is being represented by this guy named Clayman. Now Larry Clayman, I did a little bit of stuff on him. He should kind of be like Larry Klansman. He tried to act like he's all inclusive with all the races, but this is also somebody who tried to sue Obama. Al Sharpton, Black Lives Matter, and all that for raising awareness about what the police are doing to uh, to black people, trying to say that black people are trying to start an uprising mm -hmm. against the police. It's like, are you kidding, kidding me? me? So Larry Clayman is a fucking joke. George Zimmerman is a fucking joke. And the Crump, who is the, uh, the the lawyer, he's hoping that all this shit just gets thrown out. I hope all this shit gets thrown out, too. I hope a judge has some logic and some sense and look at this shit and be like, Get the fuck out my courtroom. Yeah, it, yeah. it it will because it doesn't benefit the greater good or society in general. No, it doesn't. And there was all of these like systemic lawsuits against black people at the turn of the century from the 19th century and the 20th century when like black people were suing for rights to just to walk down the street, mm -hmm. all the other stuff and yeah. law enforcement. And there was like, oh, these black people are getting too much power. We've got to, you know, they, this was their big pushback. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work then. And it actually created and spawned 
the beginning of the civil rights era, which started basically in World War One, because there were all these black soldiers, they mm -hmm. were fighting and they weren't getting rights and things mm -hmm. like that. So I honestly think this is a good thing. And I honestly think these things should go into court, be evaluated and then thrown out because what it's doing, it's creating momentum mm -hmm. to get us back into that same mentality or Word. mental space again of civil rights. Mm -hmm. Because now we're getting attention put in these spaces where white people are going like, Oh my God, that is so morally apprehensible for mm -hmm. someone to to sue a family who has lost a child. Yeah, that's what this is. That's yeah. when white people the the light bulb goes off on the top of their heads mm -hmm. and they hear the bells and they go, "Okay, enough's enough. Word. This is this is an extreme." George is actually doing us a favor that is going to have positive ramifications and rippling effects moving forward. I sure the hell hope so. I think I completely think so because this is, is the kind of waste thing, of human space. And this is the kind of thing that it, lawyers and attorneys there's going to be countersuits against these people that are suing. Like, George is playing in a very very dangerous waters here. Yeah. If Johnny Cochran was alive today, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. he'd, he'd yeah. mop the floor with do. George Zimmerman. Yeah. He would, you know what I mean? Like yeah. we just don't have that type of representation right now in mm -hmm. our in our culture but we will again yeah and this is why kamala mm -hmm. go be johnny cochran word don't be the president of the united states yeah, i yeah. love her i think she's cute she gets into my vip room word go be johnny cochran don't try to be president uh and then the, the whole george zimmerman thing came out at an interesting time do you know that this fool has a documentary coming out called the trayvon martin hoax it's called the trayvon the trayvon it's hoax unmasking the witness fraud that divided america who paid who paid for it Probably he did. You think he paid for it? I, I didn't know that bank who paid for him. It. Like who? Well, they they tried to have it shown at this at the Coral's Gable Art Cinema in uh in Florida, in Miami? and they, they 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 shut that down. No it was like way. nope, no, they didn't do it. Wow. They they found out what the film I'm was. I'm trying to get screened at the Coral Gables down. Art Center. I have a civil rights film that I'd like to have screened there. You should call them because they were they was about. Apparently to they got a shit. slot. They got yeah. an open. They got an opening. They got an opening. They got an opening. So wow. In closing, for that fuck George Zimmerman. Fuck Larry Klansman. On some real, on some real, on some real shit. Y'all on some bullshit. All right, yeah, last, I, last well, story I guess of the he day. just figured that wow, white people really don't like me that much, and now I got nothing. I, I, I just, I don't understand why he's still alive. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I don't advocate for the death of anyone. I'm not saying no, that. And that's not but I don't understand but, why he's still you alive. You know, coming from what we come from, if somebody street sweeps you, mm -hmm. yo, turn up. Come on. Anyway, uh, last story of the day. Let me see here. These headphones just need some milk. Yeah, it makes me think though, like. People get killed for nothing. For nothing. Every day. Every day. Every day. And this dude's still walking around and, right. and, and doing and, dumb and, shit. And all these rappers talk about how gangster know, they are. Yeah. They, do something. I mean, I mean, I don't condone. I don't condone, condone it either. Violence, but I don't condone it come either. Come on, man. Anyway, let, let's get this last story before you we realize if he sees this broadcast, he'll sue us. I know, right? For, for will, libel, so he will. He will. They sue threatening us. my life. That's a threat. You're a threatening my life. I didn't say that. I didn't say shit. I didn't know. <laughs> Fat fuck. Anyway. More than 220,000 people have signed an online petition to remove position. Michael Vick as an honorary Pro Bowl captain. So Michael Vick is set to be a Pro Bowl in the Pro Bowl Legends. He is set to be a Pro Bowl Legends captain in the annual <coughs> game next month. First of all, we talk about football here. Settle down. So at least 220,000 people have signed a new online petition on change.org asking the NFL to have Vic removed from the game entirely what? due to his role in a dogfighting sting during his playing days 100 Come fucking on, years guys. ago. <laughs> so this is back in 2007 that this happened. Michael Vick served 18 months in federal sure prison, paid all this money, had his whole career, career. sidetracked, and they still are going out for blood. So uh, this lady named Joanna, <coughs> Joanna Lind, uh, she's the one that actually started the petition. She said, this is a quote from her. I just saw this on Facebook and was absolutely disgusted. When is the NFL going to take any responsibility for the behavior of its current and former players to honor a man who had zero regard for animals is unacceptable. And I would like to help make sure he is not honored at the 2020 NFL Pro Bowl. Blah, blah, blah. So this, this is my question that I need to ask. What does it take to get forgiven? What does it take? He did everything they asked him to do. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, 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 I know this don't have nothing. To do, <coughs> but it's like a dog is more important than a black life. All day long. All day long. I, That's what I always it's, say. It's so, it's so crazy. And I, I'm speaking from a point of view for somebody who loves dogs. 
I love dogs. I respect dogs. I think they're amazing. You but treat them two dogs. Good. Fuck them dogs. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think there is a hierarchy system because we the yeah, humans are yeah. here to take care of the animals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That means that we are in charge of the animals. I'm not saying do with what you want to do with an animal. I'm not no. saying that. But when it comes to the line of fucking shit that's living, humans are here and then animals are here. Mm -hmm. So I find that people have put animals here and humans here. Because if Joanna Lynn wants to make a change.org fucking petition, how about you petition to get them homeless people some help downtown LA how about all the children and shit that need uh, you know the water in Flint why don't you make a fucking change.org about getting some water and shit in Flint she's so worried about this, this motherfucker playing football for some goddamn dogs and shit like come on where's your parties oh, where's your parties I, I'm gonna say something really disturbing go ahead I'm gonna say something. Um, I used to fuck dogs that yes that's, that's exactly what I and then just been. drop the mic and walk out <laughs> Yeah. Episode over. Exactly. Yeah. I love that episode. That was amazing. Here's the problem. All right, go ahead. Turn up. Um, we in our Western culture have created a different construct of reality as far as the value of mm -hmm. human life is concerned. 100%. And it started when we first got here and we said, man, look at all these Indians. Too bad they got to go. Right. And then I was like, oh, my God, there's a lot of work to be done here. Mm -hmm. We got to get somebody to do it. Mm -hmm. We wrote a constitution. In that constitution, we initially said Article 1, one of the first things we wrote into the constitution was black people are three-fifths mm. of a person. Turn down. We are still coming to terms with this. People in this country, there are many people in this country, whether they want to admit it to themselves or not, they believe that brown people are less. Mm. They do not believe that they hold the same value. Period. End of story. Mm -hmm. And we will never overcome that in this society if we sit around obsessing about it. The reality of it is that we will continue to take these hits and these levels of unfair criticism from white people always. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just sitting in this room and the look on some of these people's faces as they walk by us mm -hmm. and they they see us there you as if that. we're not supposed, in the energy that comes yes. through, mm -hmm. we're not supposed to be here, okay? What she is saying is that she thinks Michael Vick doesn't deserve to be there because she believes him to be subhuman and these animals have more value than him. Mm -hmm. Number one, mm -hmm. Finger who, snaps. Goes to, who goes to federal prison for two years because of dog killings? Dog killings are wrong, and I have without a doubt, and work. you should be fined, work. and there should be some sort of stiff penalty, but to lose your ability to work and to go to federal prison is excessive. Yes. And always when black people do things wrong or break the law, the punishment never fits the crime turn up you know and this is another example of that and this is where white people now within the recent regime change that we've had since 2016 they have license to criticize us on levels that are out of bounds mm. and they're comfortable with it and Tommy she, Loren. she thinks that it's okay for her to say these things mm -hmm. and she doesn't even know anything about it really and she's obviously not a former football player mm -hmm. as well yeah so and I'm not saying a woman can't chime in on an issue re regarding the conduct of a football player but you really better have your story straight and this is completely emotional and we all know that unfortunately in our society, we put the value of lower forms of life, dogs, animals, and cats, and all sort of stuff, ahead of humans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can look past these human beings living on the streets. Word. If we see a little lost dog, it's like, oh my God, yeah. does it have a tag on it? We need yeah. to find it a home. <laughs> Word. And all this other exactly. stuff. Yeah. You know? And this is once again raising another really important issue that is creating the rippling effect for a greater look into civil liberties as we move forward mm -hmm. because this woman looks like a fool. And at the end of the day, they have 200,000 signatures for this, but the NFL is a multi-billion dollar Word. business. Yeah. You know, 
two hundred thousand goes into multi billions. Yeah. Once with nothing left over. Yeah. Nobody's going to shift the paradigm and yeah. create the media storm against someone who doesn't even play in the NFL anymore. One hundred percent. Who also is the person he is the architect of the modern NFL football player. Yeah, especially he, the quarterback. Whatever yeah. what, whatever it is, everything you see in these talented young men that are out there now that mm -hmm. are black leading teams is because of Michael Vick. Turn That's up. why we got Lamar Jackson. <laughs> Turn right. up. Yeah. And again, Michael Vick is a victim of the system. He comes from Newport News, Virginia, which is a shithole. When he came from the same town as I, Allen Iverson, which was a shithole, mm -hmm. they both participated in a lot of, you know, rancid you know scandalous behavior that they were allowed to get away with because they were great athletes mm -hmm. if we stop letting these young men be bad young men and we put them in environments to help them Word. these things wouldn't happen if michael vick had the types of support systems that were necessary for all young men to grow up in he wouldn't have killed dogs in the first place got you like we got to look deeper than this we're always just you know punishing the criminal but we're never looking deeper into why they became the criminal 100 percent. you know and so like her opinion means nothing to me mm -hmm. because there are people all over this country like you said that commit crimes all the time mm -hmm. and we look deeper or more as sympathetic i mean there have been uh nfl football players who are white that have killed people mm -hmm. that have gambled who have stolen yeah. who have done all kinds who of have crap. raped right. for the right. pittsburgh and the, steelers the, 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 and still play football exactly mm -hmm. like and he He's, he's a pro bowler. He's going to go into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And he, he raped that girl in Georgia. Yeah. You know, and I remember that. And I know someone who used to hang out at that bar, and he raped that girl in a bar in the bathroom while his boys blocked the door to keep anybody else from coming in. Yikes. That was real. And I hope he never plays in the NFL again. Mm -hmm. And But they won't have this same petition against him no, sure to won't. celebrate him as a pro bowler. Sure won't. Exactly. So this is really, once again, about... Black people need to get back in their lanes. They have too much. They know too much. Obama opened up too much. Mm -hmm. They didn't want, they didn't account for the society to become so open after the Obama era. That's why everyone's trying to slam the door, slam the door, slam the door, slam the door. Doors open, doors off its hinges. Turn up. And so it's not going to change. And so we're going to continue to hear these stories mm -hmm. and they're going to continue to to criticize people. You know, that's why Kanye puts on the confederate jacket because that's his protection mm -hmm. look don't come out criticizing me i'm okay right because i'm kind of I'm, I'm one of you i'm one of you i'm kind of doing what you want me to do mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then that's why like you know you know beyonce is kind of silent and jay-z is kind of weird and it's just like all of these black people that could really make some serious changes in mm -hmm. the world and stand up to the system they're not really getting in there and fighting the good a good fight and michael vick has rehabilitated himself he has become a good 100%. person he has tried he has given money he has done the things that are necessary yeah for penance and the fact and I, that I think unfortunately i don't i think he was just funding the operation he for was, one thing he, he wasn't there raising he got, he, dogs he, he got host, playing football he had too many but, but but you we all know this because we all come from something where we have to shake loose certain numbers of people in oh, our yeah. lives that come from our communities oh, because God. we know that it will take us down mm. and some of us are stronger than others mm -hmm. and that is the hardest thing i've ever done in my life is to tell my own people certain people in my own community no word. yeah word. and it hurts yeah because you want to bring up everybody but yeah, you yeah. know you can't bring up everybody because not everybody is like you word. we are a diverse culture of people as well word. and people like her believe that we operate in mass mm. and that is not true we are not three-fifths of a person we are Turn a up. whole person all day and we deserve a vote and we deserve the ability to be you know, judged like anybody else. And right. people just do not want to judge us like people. And that's their last power, mm. you know, is just throwing everything into the media cycle, making up all of these things and making us look bad. Word. And creating this chaos and confusion and distraction in order to keep them in power. As long as we're a distracted culture, white people will remain in power. Turn up. Once we become undistracted, good people will be in power and the reflection of good people is all people Word. and i think we've got guys that are like floating out oh is it time the for them to yeah the room? they look upset and scared so uh, all right well like, okay on that yeah, note no. there you mr. go mr mr frederick taylor it's been As a pleasure always. yes having you again did always. you want to give them your social media or anything like that i do or? um tomorrow pictures is the company tomorrowpictures.com tomorrowpictures.tv and you can find me on all kinds of social media instagram facebook all the other stuff at fr3d 
fr3der1ck.com. And if you can't remember it all, just Google fr3der1ck and you'll find me. Turn up. And you can know you can find us at the Unique and Cheese Show at Gmail. Send for eat for emails and shit. And then at Unique and Cheese for Instagram. Wash your ass, brush your teeth. Another great episode. Absolutely. There's like 37 people out there. They got to study. They got a study group. About to study. They need to study. All right. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Say goodnight, Gracie.